Rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Um, we're starting a minute before 11 because I have a lot of announcements I'm going to try and uh, get through this morning. Uh, but first, I want to welcome you to Trying Mercy Center, whether you're joining us here in person or uh, via live stream, we welcome you. Um, in your bulletin, there's one announcement just reminding you to please turn your cell phones off and to wear a mask at all times and try to just keep a safe distance from your neighbor. Um, that's a strange request, yet we are in the midst of COVID, so that's um, how we're going to love our neighbors um, here at Triune. Next, next, um, next week, Tandy will be preaching her last sermon here at Triune. And the following week, which is September the 26th, we will be having a combined saying goodbye to Tandy and a, a cookout for lunch out in our parking lot. Um, so everyone is invited to that hamburger hot dog fest on the 26th of September. So I just wanted you to mark your calendar so that you can plan on joining us if you feel comfortable out in the parking lot. Um, also, there is going to be, um, we have several volunteers who are working our reception or front desk. It's a weekly commitment. Um, they sign up for either a morning shift from 9 to 1 or an afternoon shift from two to five. Uh, mainly, they answer the phone, hand out hygiene kits uh, through the window, or if in person if people come in. Um, I see Sandra here, and there's several other folks who volunteer at our front desk. We thank you. But we are in need of a few more to fill a weekly slot. So if you have interest in doing that, um, we do allow you to go on vacation and take your time off. Um, but we appreciate um, any volunteers who can help us out. If you're interested, if you would please contact Linda Hanna on staff, our volunteer coordinator, and she can give you more information concerning uh, volunteering at our reception desk. Thank you very much. Also, if you go on our website, triunemercy.org, underneath the church tab, there's a new tab there, and it's called Parishioner Registration. If you are computer savvy and you want to put in your information for contact, only the staff will see it. That's how we're collecting information. As well as we will be starting a new church newsletter, not the newsletter that goes out to the whole community, but we will have an in-house church e-newsletter that will start. So if you're interested in that, that's a way you can register for the TMC newsletter. Uh, by going on the website. If you want to do it in person, you can do that as well. Just let me know. Also, a big announcement today is Jeff Brown here. There he is. Jeff, if you'll stand up. Um, Jeff Brown is a well-known Baptist minister in town as well as respected attorney, and he has graciously agreed to serve as the interim part-time associate pastor while we search for a new associate pastor. So... I want to say thank you to Jeff, and he's going to be outside with Tandy greeting folks after the service, but we look forward to uh, working with you in a new role here at Triune, so thank you. Jeff will begin with us on September the 20th, and he'll work with Tandy for about 10 days before she um, goes into retirement. So welcome. We are glad you're here. Today, after the service, I want to invite you to exit through either door. I know a lot of people are used to going through this door, but you're also welcome to exit out of this door. We're going to have pastors at both doors today. If you would like a lunch, we're serving bagged lunches, and you'll just go through this door, pick up your bagged lunch, and um, head on outside as we're not eating right now in the dining hall. So thank you for your patience and support. I know that... Um, we hope to return to eating in the dining hall again soon. Last but not least, I want to thank Eddie James for playing the prelude this morning and another piece of music. Um, as, as David Hanna is sick today, so please keep him in your prayers. And thank you, Eddie, for jumping in. Thanks to all our musicians for being here, as well as sound and live stream and ushers and readers and staff. Without you, worship is not possible. So we give thanks that we can gather and give glory to God this day. 
So without further ado, let us turn our hearts and our souls and our minds over to the worship of our living God. I would love to invite Vernell Austin to come up and lead us in our responsive reading. Good morning, church. I am so glad to be back in the house of the um, It is hot in this match, boy. <clears throat> okay. Look at the heavens. They are shouting the glory of God. The days and the nights declare the man. How do you pronounce that? Man Management. Okay. And of God's cre cre creative works. Their voice spreads through all the earth, and their words reach the end of the world. Let our words of praise be acceptable to you. Our words are rock and our redeemer. Okay. Amen. Thanks, Amen. Would you guys please stand up? Turn to page 57. It can be easy to think of our spiritual life as pertaining to our relationship with God only. It can be all too easy to overlook the fact that our spiritual life is lived out in our relationships with others. And so let us come before Almighty God praying our prayer of confession, the ways in which we fail to live out our faithfulness to God through our relationships with others. Together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your way. We protect what is dear to us and neglect what is dear to you. We preserve our own way of life and profit at the expense of others. We say things that are mean and hurtful. Forgive us, God of grace. Show us the error of our ways. 
Help tame our tongues and guide us back to your path of righteousness, justice, and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. May the God of mercy who forgives all our sins strengthen us in all goodness that we as the church might be found as a sanctuary for the living God, shining out tried and true. In Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Alleluia and amen.
Today we continue in the matter of fact, say it like it is, book of James. As a reminder for James, the marks of true religion and living out what it means to love your neighbor. Those marks are integrity of speech, your words, and concern for the weak and vulnerable, your actions. Today we look at integrity of speech. In chapter 1, verses 19, James writes, Know this, my dear brothers and sisters, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to grow angry. This leads to today's passage in chapter 3, where James addresses controlling or taming the tongue. This is the longest passage in the Bible about the role of speech in the life of a Christian. For James, speech is one of the biggest ways in which we sin. James agrees with Jesus in Matthew's Gospel that a person's words are the revelation of their character. Before turning to God's word for us this day, first, let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Listen to a word from God found in the book of James, chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. My brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers because we know that we teachers will be judged more strictly. We all make mistakes often, but those who don't make mistakes with their words have reached full maturity. Like a bridled horse, they can control themselves entirely. When we bridle horses and put bits in their mouths to lead them wherever we want, we can control their whole bodies. Consider ships. They are so large that strong winds are needed to drive them, but pilots direct their ships wherever they want with a little rudder. In the same way, even though the tongue is a small part of the body, it boasts wild wildly. Think about this. A small flame can set a whole forest on fire. The tongue is a small flame of fire, a world of evil at work in us. It contaminates our entire lives. Because of it, the circle of life is set on fire. The tongue itself is set on fire by the flames of hell. People can tame and already have tamed every kind of animal, bird, reptile, and fish. No one can tame the tongue, though. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it, we both bless the Lord and Father and curse human beings made in God's likeness. Blessing and cursing come from the same mouth. My brothers and sisters, it just shouldn't be this way. Both fresh water and salt water don't come from the same spring, do they? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree produce olives? Can a grapevine produce figs? Of course not. And fresh water doesn't flow from a salt water spring either. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Several male ministers from a small town decided to go out in a boat and fish one afternoon. Due to little activity among the fish, they began to talk. Since they had counseled their own parishioners for many years that confession is good for the soul, they decided they would practice what they had been preaching. Each decided to confess a secret sin to the others. The first said that his great fault was his bad language. He still had trouble once in a while holding back improper words. 
The second minister admitted that his weakness was materialism. He was too fond of money, and it was his first and main consideration in changing churches. The third preacher broke the news of an addiction to petty gambling on anything from golf to football. The last minister, who was the helmsman of the small craft, had by this time turned the boat toward the shore and had increased his speed. One of the confessors said, what's the hurry? Besides, you haven't made your confession yet. The minister replied, well, you see, my sin is gossip, and I just can't wait to get home. Yes, we laugh because we painfully know our sinfulness to be true. Whose tongue has gotten them into trouble before? I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but I think all of us would raise our hands. Amen? How many of us have been tempted or actually have bad mouth a sister or brother in Christ or any other religion or no religion at all? Or use prayer as a guise for gossip? Or said something mean? Or started rumors just because? What about sharing false information? How much wiser and more Christ-like might we be if we were to listen more and talk less? It's bad enough to say the wrong thing, but to be in the speaking profession and to say the wrong thing, well, that's just embarrassing. Believe me, I know from experience. We all make mistakes, James says, with our words. And I would venture to say that most, if not all of us, have yet to reach full maturity when it comes to our faith. James begins this chapter by saying not many of those gathered should become teachers. So some of us say, yay, we're off the hook. Why and who are the teachers? James says that there will be more judgment for the teachers. James identifies as a teacher And within the overall context of his letter, he also considers teachers as, quote, servants of God and of the Lord Christ Jesus. When we think of a teacher, we often think of someone who has influence over those they teach, or at least teachers hope so, amen? And when we think of teachers who have integrity, we think of those who practice what they teach. However, it's not just those of you who make a living teaching or those who have signed up to teach Bible study who are teachers. No, for James, a teacher would have included most, if not all, of his readers, which also includes any who follow Christ. James might argue by our words and our actions, we are teachers of the Christian faith, all of us. After all, ministry is not done by just the preacher or the teacher, but by the whole church. Amen? Because we are every bit as much stewards of speech as we are of our time, our talents, and our treasures. Here, James uses real-life imagery as metaphors to help him make his point about the tongue. He compares it to a horse's bridle or a ship's rudder or a small fire and its ability to generate great impact on the lives of others. Though small in size, both the bits and the rudder control the direction of a much bigger body to which they are attached. The tongue controls the direction of a person. What does it mean to think of your tongue as the driver that controls your whole being? Or perhaps in today's vernacular, what does it mean to think of our entire being as controlled by what we put on social media? Our thoughts become our words. Listen to this quote attributed to Gandhi, or at least an ancient Chinese proverb. Quote, 
Watch your thoughts. They become words. Watch your words. They become actions. Watch your actions. They become habits. Watch your habits. They become your character. Watch your character. It becomes your destiny. End quote. Last week, a colleague of mine in a small town in the upstate shared this story with me, and she shared it with her congregation, and I asked permission to share it with you all today. A few weeks ago, there was an unfortunate incident that happened in this town. My colleague did not witness it, but she learned about it on Facebook. More than what actually happened, she was most disturbed by the comments of members of this particular Facebook group. You see, there was a woman walking down Highway 123 naked. Rather than stopping and offering to help her, so many people took pictures of her and posted them along with hateful words. The comments about this woman made my colleague literally weep. So many people were casting judgments upon this woman without even knowing her or even stopping to ask how they as a community might help her. She ended up at a local gas station down from several churches in this small town. And some good Samaritan did help her. That good Samaritan? The town drunk. But my colleague could not help but wonder how many people who drove by snapped a picture and wrote those hateful things about this obviously distraught woman would be sitting somewhere in a church in a pew the next Sunday. Our words, friends, can protect, affirm, and celebrate the dignity and worth of every human being or reduce people to labels. Child of God, naked woman, town drunk. If you look closely towards the end of today's scripture lesson, you will see a reference to the creation story in verse 9. Made in the likeness of God. James references how faithful Christians should speak with integrity about other human beings who were all made in God's image. God's speech in creation was good, remember? And it was good. And it was good. And it was good, both in its content and in its effect. So should ours be. However, James observes that with the very same mouth, folks are blessing God and cursing their neighbor. In other words, to curse a human being is, in effect, to curse God. But that's messed up. Just like both fresh and salt water don't come from the same spring, nor can a fig tree produce olives, nor a grapevine produce figs. We shouldn't behave this way, James says. As followers of Christ, we are called to speak or write or type in ways that reflect the character of or the will of God. James invites us to consider speaking to one another as informed by the ways that we speak to God. Not only theology, but science even tells us that words matter. I don't know if you all saw What the Bleep Do We Know years ago, but there's a Japanese scientist, Dr. Masuro Emoto, who conducted an experiment called the Water Experiment which led to his belief that human thoughts and words have an effect on the molecular structure of water. Emoto exposed water samples to various emotional stimuli, music, words, both spoken and typed, pictures and videos in several languages representing both positive and negative thoughts. 
he found that when the water samples were frozen, those that had been exposed to positive thoughts or words formed beautiful crystals while those exposed to negative human thoughts or words formed distorted and ugly crystals. He tried different sources of water. Same results. Our bodies are made up of over 60% water. If thoughts and words can do this to water, imagine what our thoughts and words do to us. Emoto came to believe that water is the so-called blueprint of our reality. Words matter. Remember, sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never hurt you. Well, I learned this as a child, as it was said to comfort me, or maybe my parents, when someone said something mean. But you know what? It's a lie. It's a lie. Words can and do hurt. It can have a negative effect far beyond the healing of a broken bone. People have taken their lives over words. Words matter. You know that. I know that. A first grader knows that. And James most definitely knew it. The tongue has no bones, but it is strong enough to break a heart. So be careful with your words. Like the small flame, the tongue can set a whole forest on fire and be restless evil and poison that contaminates our entire lives. And friends, it seems these days that the world is on fire. When will we learn and take responsibility for our speech? The late Dr. Maya Angelou, distinguished poet, spoke in an interview once about the power of words. She said, quote, words are things. I wish I had her voice. I am convinced. You must be careful about the words you use or the words you allow to be used in your house. In the New Testament, we are told in John that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Words are things. We must be careful. We must be careful with the names we call people. We must not use racial pejoratives or sexual pejoratives and all that ignorance. Don't do that. Someday we'll be able to measure the power of words. I think they are things. They get on the walls and in your wallpaper and into your rugs, in your upholstery, into your clothes, and finally into you." End quote. The tongue is a microcosm of what's going on inside of us. Speech is never just speech, my friends. It shapes our views of ourselves, and of the world. We live in a time where words are easily spoken, written, or typed in emails, text, tweets, Facebook. Words that cannot be taken back after you push the send button. James is calling each of us out, reminding us that controlling the tongue, though difficult, is not impossible with God's help. We can't do it by ourselves, amen? But with God's help, we can do it. Taming the tongue is a spiritual discipline for James and for us, which points to the presence of God in our world. It is more than just learning to bite our tongues or hold them. You know, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. It's learning with God's help to control our tongues and to change our thoughts, which is much, much harder and much, much more sustainable. Words matter, friends, and they determine who we truly are. So let's pray for the discipline to choose our words with integrity, words that speak life, 
that lift up our neighbor in the image of God and align us with God's will in Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Even when we cannot be faithful to God or to someone else, God is still faithful. Even when we cannot be good to someone else or to ourselves, God is still good. Even when we cannot forgive someone or forgive ourselves, God is still forgiving. God's goodness knows no bounds. And so with hearts filled with gratitude, let us lift up our tithes and offerings to Almighty God.
Holy God, thank you for all your goodness to us and for your grace that amazes us. And so now we offer up to you these, our meager gifts, and pray that you might use them for your holy purposes in the world, to bring love to all those in our broken world, to bring peace and reconciliation in our conflicted world, and to bring light in those dark places in our world, all for your name's sake. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. It says in the Bible, O oh God, that you created the world through your word. Your word is powerful, and so are our words. They can heal, create a smile, be a declaration of love, but they can also hurt and destroy a sense of self-worth. Give us your wisdom, God of the word so that as a church and as individuals, we use our words to build up and not destroy. We pray for courage so that we can live out faith, giving witness with our words and actions that you are Messiah. And we pray for love, your love in us, so that we can live with the intentionality to know each other by name, and to have deep relationships that you want us to have with you and each other. Through Jesus Christ, who lives in unity with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord. Be our rock and our redeemer. Our prayer today is for all who are victims of injustice, those who are subjected to prejudice, denied opportunities, excluded, and pushed to the margins. Help us to trust the healing of your blessing and love, placed even now in the hands of those who seek to face down injustice, and champion human rights, who stand in the dark places with your light held high, who give of themselves for the sake of others. Our prayer today is for the landless and homeless, the refugee and evicted, those who find themselves in foreign places and strange places. May we have room in our hearts and homes for refugees and strangers, that we may learn to share our goods and ourselves with all people loved by God, the poor and the lonely and those who suffer. Our prayer today is for the overworked and the underpaid, for those in dangerous work and those in compassionate work, for those who long to work, but who are denied the opportunity. Help us not to give up on believing that you can use well the gifts we offer, that you will call forth the gifts of your people again and again. Holy friend, healer, and life giver, in a world where we struggle to understand pain and suffering, and most especially in the lives of those we love. We lift up before you those who are at this very moment suffering with sickness, grief, mental health challenges, addictions, trauma, abuse, and death. We especially pray for those grieving the events of September 11th, 
for those who witnessed and survived, those who came to rescue and protect, and we remember those who gave their lives in service to others. We bring before you those for whom we weep, those we embrace in our hearts, those to whom we reach out in the yearnings of our prayers, that they may be comforted, healed, and protected. Our prayer today is for the church, for all the branches of the vine, including this one, that we gather as a part of today. Body of Christ, people of Christ, for whom the Lord our God is one, that love of God and neighbor is the heart of the gospel and that people are God's gift to us. Let us pray to our kind and merciful God that his love for us may animate all we do and that our love may become contagious. Amen. Friends, if you leave today hearing nothing else, hear this. Words matter. They matter. How we treat one another matters to God. We are called to love our neighbors as ourselves. And if you're looking in the mirror and speak bad words about yourself, stop it. Words matter. So let's go out and be careful with our tongues. Giving God all praise and glory and not cursing our neighbor with the same mouth. And now may the love of God, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the friendship and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you, now and forever, world without end. Amen. Amen.